the world unites to honour the memory of Her Majesty. From heartfelt tributes to important announcements, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak recalled that, with the perspective of a year, the scale of Her Late Majesty's service only seems greater. I was struck by her wisdom, by her incredible warmth and grace, but also her sharp wit. Many other world leaders share his view. The life of Queen Elizabeth II is all the more astounding. Her calm, her presence, her image defined half of the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st. At the same time, royal fans honoured the Queen's kindness and empathy that she showed to millions of people throughout her life. We're all blessed to have had her as our Queen. She was such a presence in our lives. To mark the sad anniversary of Elizabeth II's death, Australian artist Sue Norman even created a giant portrait of her in beach sand. Brits even discussed making the date of the sovereigns passing a national holiday. Obviously, the Queen's state funeral in 2022 was an official day off. However, no announcements have been made regarding this year being a holiday. But Parliament did reveal other plans as to how the country will pay tribute to the late monarch. There will be a memorial constructed for the nation's longest reigning Queen. A special committee is already deciding where exactly it will be and what it should look like. The memorial is set to be opened in 2026. This date was chosen to mark the late Sovereign's 100th birthday. Currently, there is one memorial to honour the Queen. It was installed at the church at York Minster. The square in front of the building now bears the late monarch's name. The statue was supposed to be unveiled on Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee. However, there was a delay. Her Majesty didn't live to see the official opening. King Charles III and Queen Camilla opened it as the new reigns a month after Elizabeth's death. The late Queen was always vigilant for the wealth of people during her life. Now, her image will watch over what's to come in Elizabeth Square for centuries to come. The town of Oakham in the East Midlands of England is set to receive yet another lasting tribute to Queen Elizabeth II. It will be also a statue. However, this one will be installed as per the wishes of the city's residents. Eager to pay their respects to the Queen in her homeland, they donated the money needed to make a monument. London has paid homage to one of the Queen's greatest passions, her corgis. Elizabeth II famously owned more than 30 dogs throughout her life. The last of them passed away only a few weeks before Her Majesty, so people dressed their corgis in crowns, tiaras and royal attire and walked them outside Buckingham Palace. The dog parade wasn't something brand new. Brits also did it during the Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebrations. Elizabeth II apparently loved the initiative, Let's hope it becomes a lasting tribute in her memory. And how did Charles himself mark the Queen's death anniversary? The King and Queen Camilla opted for a quiet day of remembrance. Charles inherited this tradition from his mother. During her lifetime, Queen Elizabeth always spent her accession day privately. She retreated to Sandringham Palace, where her father, King George, passed away to reflect on his final moments. Charles followed in her footsteps and spent time at Balmoral. The Scottish residence was where the Queen spent her last month and eventually passed away. So it appears that it has become a tradition for Charles to be there at the beginning of September. The King paid homage to his mother's memory, not only by being present in Scotland, but also by upholding her traditions. Just last Saturday, Charles III, accompanied by Queen Camilla, Princess Anne and Vice Admiral Timothy Lawrence, visited the Highland Games. This traditional Scottish sporting event held a special place in the late monarch's heart. She rarely missed it during her lifetime. Elizabeth II also attended Sunday church services at Craithy Kirk whenever she was at Balmoral. So the Queen's children and their spouses put it on their agenda. The monarch even extended an invitation to the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and his wife Akshatamurti to join them in church. By doing so, his Majesty echoed Queen Elizabeth II's other custom. She usually hosted Prime Ministers at Balmoral for both relaxation and state discussions. Insiders also revealed that the royal family has plans for an intimate event to commemorate the passing of Elizabeth II, and the royal family still released official tributes to the late Queen. The King released a statement to honour his mother. In marking the first anniversary of Her Late Majesty's death and my accession, 
we recall with great affection her long life, devoted service, and all she meant to so many of us. His Majesty also requested that the day be marked with gun salutes. The King's Troop Royal Horse Artillery fired 41 gunshots. The oldest British Army Regiment saluted from the Tower of London with 62 guns. Prince William and Princess Catherine headed to Wales to commemorate the late monarch. They attended a church service at St David's Cathedral, a place deeply significant to Queen Elizabeth II. Her Majesty was a member of its cathedral chapter. It was also the first church she attended outside England as a monarch. Everyone showed how deeply they missed the late Queen, not only in their speeches and official gestures, but in the small details too. As the royal family gathered at Balmoral Castle, Kate wore a brown tartan jacket and smart feathered fedora hat in a Balmoral tartan style. It was Elizabeth II's signature wardrobe style for the Highlands. The Princess of Wales has continued to pay tribute to the Queen throughout the year. For instance, at the wedding of Crown Prince Hussein of Jordan, Kate wore Greville chandelier earrings. Her Majesty previously owned them and wore them to lots of important events. The jewellery was even featured in one of her official portraits, so they seemed to have great significance to the Queen. Another piece of jewellery Elizabeth II loved was the four-strand diamond and pearl choker. Catherine has worn it on several occasions this year. Queen Camilla also pays respect to the late monarch's jewellery tastes. Charles's wife has sported Elizabeth's sapphires, and she wore the complete King George VI Victorian suite with matching tiara, just like her mother-in-law did. A particularly touching tribute came through an outfit of King Charles III on Trooping the Colour. This year, he wore a uniform featuring the cipher of Queen Elizabeth II. Royal fans believe it was the King's way of ensuring his mother's presence was at the celebration, at least symbolically. Throughout this year, the King has continued to acknowledge his mother's spirit at various events. Last Christmas, he recorded his speech at a very special place, St George's Chapel in Windsor. I'm standing here in this exquisite chapel of St. George at Windsor Castle, so close to where my beloved mother, the late Queen, is laid to rest with my dear father. He kindly reminded people of Her Majesty's incredible faith in her country and the people she served. After Charles succeeded the throne, the King dedicated his whole speech to his mother. Throughout her life, Her Majesty the Queen, my beloved mother, was an inspiration, an example to me and to all my family. And we owe her the most heartfelt debt any family could owe to their mother. One of the most significant acts of honouring Queen Elizabeth II's memory was King Charles's coronation. His Majesty waited for eight months before officially taking the crown. The reason behind this wasn't due to preparations like many people thought. Charles had been prepping to become a king for decades, so he could have organised the celebration in a few weeks. Postponing the ceremony was a gesture of respect and mourning for his late mother. The coronation itself also featured meaningful details. There were branches from a special tree planted by the Queen and Prince Philip at the high altar in Westminster Abbey. Camilla's crown was encrusted with two of the biggest stones from Elizabeth's personal jewellery collection. People believe that the delay could also have been honouring the late Queen's wishes. As time goes on, we hope the family, Great Britain and the world at large will continue to carry forward the legacy of Queen Elizabeth II.